Recently, we've been hearing stories and stories about stories. It started with Snapchat and then Instagram eventually picked it up with huge success. These days, stories pop everywhere. VS Code, it pops on Gmail and everything you can imagine. Very recently, Twitter added fleets, which look very similar. And so I thought that would be interesting to try build this UI that's now very common and popular uh, with Tailwind to show you some of the utility classes. So for that, we'll be using Tailwind Play. I'll just adjust my mic a little bit lower so I'm more comfortable for typing. Here I have a title that I prepared before. The CSS file is the default three Tailwind directives. And in the config file, I just extended the colors with one color that no one knows how to pronounce. And before I pronounce it, I thought I would ask Google how to pronounce this. And the answer is Fuchsia. So I'll call it Fuchsia, right? <laughs> so let's hop back in here. So here I extend my config file with the Fuchsia color uh, that we require from CSS slash colors. So the first thing we're going to do here uh, is create a list. We'll create an, an ordered list, right? And inside this another list, we'll have an li element. Let's close it before we forget. And inside, we'll have an anchor tag with a href of pound hashtag. And inside of this link, we will have an image tag. And we'll go fetch some cute kittens from placekitten.com. Uh, and let's go with 200 by 200 with an alt tag of cute kitty. And let's close our image tag. Under that link, we want another link with the name of the kitty. So another anchor tag with an href. And here the name will be, uh, let's call it kitty1. Right. So now that we've got this, uh, let's duplicate this to get a bunch of them. We'll create uh, four. One, two, three, four. So we want them to line side by side. So the first thing we'll do is on the UL wrapper, add a class of flex, which will put them uh, on the X axis, flex. And I will also use a spacing utility with space X. And you can see I have all these options that create a margin left on every element except the first one. So it's really useful in that case. Uh, I'll go with six. This is nice like this. Next thing we want to do is probably add some classes to the images. So I'll select all four images and we're going to first uh, make them a bit smaller, H24 and W24. And we're going to go rounded full. So we get this nice uh, circle look. Next thing we want to do is maybe on the link itself, add some classes. So I'll add a background color. Uh, and for now we will go with BG yellow 500. And you can't see this, you can't see the background yet because we need to add a display block class to our um, link. And now I'll add some padding. Uh, let's go with two, eh, maybe one. And we'll mix this thing around it full as well. So now you can see this nice halo. But if we look back at our image, we actually want a white circle inside of the colorful circle. So for now, this will be used for that white. So I'll go BG white. We could use a border as well, but let's go with background here. Cool. So next thing I want to do is center align this little kitty one text here. I will grab each of the four LI elements and on the wrapper for each of these four uh, items, I'll add a class of flex. So this is going to break it, but we're going to say flex call this time to make it stack vertically. And now we can apply classes like items center. Uh, which is going to work. And we can also use vertical spacing with the space Y utilities. And again, we have our range. You can see the text going further down. We'll go with eh, space Y1 is actually pretty good. So we're already in our LI elements here. So we can add a background color to test. Again, let's go with BG yellow 500 as a hello world of colors and add some padding one once again. And now you can see a problem arising. We actually want the circle around just the image and not the name of the kitty. So one thing we can do is backpedal on this PG yellow here and wrap a link in a div. Div. And close it here. And now we can apply our class name here instead. So we've created a wrapper around this so we can 
style it uh, without being affected by the one below, right? So once again, let's go rounded full. And it looks pretty nice now. Uh, instead of a hard background, what we're going to do is use a background gradient. So we can go bg-gradient2. And you can see we have options to go to top, top right, right. And in our case, we want to go to top right. Because if you look here, you can see the gradient starts on the bottom left and goes to the top right. So let's do that. We will go from and go yellow 400. And you can see the top right because it's not defined defaults to transparent for now. And we go to, uh, let's go with our fuchsia <laughs> 600. And that's pretty nice. So let's look at it. Uh, we have now this nice halo, which is starting to take shape. So let's make it a little bit cooler by maybe adding some hover states. So for each of our four links, I'll go to the end and add tell on hover, I would like you to rotate negatively by six. Now, nothing is going to happen just now. Uh, if you see I hover, nothing happens. Because when you use transform utilities, a rotate is a transform, you need to enable a transform toggle class, which is called transform. So if I add transform here, now we should have our little kitties dancing. Very cool. If this is a bit too sharp for your liking, too jittery, we can also add a class of transition, which will apply defaults at easing and durations. And now you can see our kittens move very smoothly. Right. It's only occurring to me now that we have four times the same cat with the same name, so let's fix that. The kitty number two is going to call, be called meow383, and we'll change the values here a little bit to give to find a new image. Nice. The second one can be snuggles, snuggles22, and we'll try to trigger a cute photo. Very nice. And the last one, boopity bap. And again, let's try our luck with a random number and very cute. So now we got these four kittens that are pretty excited to tell their story, as you can see. Uh, one more thing I want to do here is you can see the first one is you and it has this little plus button, which I thought would be interesting. So let's upgrade kitty one to be you. And looking back here, you can see that we kind of want to position this button on the circle. So we have a box and we would like to relatively position the circle inside this box. So what we need to do is, I'll do it just on the first one, on our div here, which is the container of the whole circle, we are going to apply a position relative class. That in itself does nothing, but it's going to allow us to position things absolutely within that box. So now under the link here, I'll create a button, which is just going to have plus. So it looks broken now, but let's fix that. I'll add an absolute position class. So now it's at the bottom left. And if I add a class of top and you can see, I can have all these values to allow me to position it absolutely within this box. In our case, we want to place it to bottom zero and right zero to start with. So now it's at the bottom right and let's style it a little bit like we want it to look. So BG blue 500, uh, a height and width of eight will do rounded full text white text to Excel, font uh, semi bold. We'll add a border with a width of two. Mm, let's go with four actually and make it border white. So I'll make this button a flex container and justify center and items center. You can see it's still a bit off, but this is actually due to the font positioning of the plus character. So I'll switch to font monospace. Nice. Let's add some hover state here. So hover BG blue 700. So now on hover, you can see the color change. The position is already pretty good. We probably want to move it just a little bit to the left. So if I go here, I can go right one and that works really nicely. And that kind of completes our UI here. If we want to quickly recap, we've looked at things like flex containers, spacing utilities, background colors, background gradients, border radiuses, uh, hover states, animations, rotations, lots of nice things. There's one thing I can imagine here is if we take the longest line here, there's a lot of classes applied to this button. And I can imagine people would run away from this. Uh, I would not personally do this, but one thing you can do is copy all these classes 
And instead of that, I'll delete and break it for a second. We will create, create story. Now in my CSS, I can go here and add a class name. To make sure I can override it nicely with utilities, I will place this in a layer called components, which is this one. So whatever CSS we write here will be injected in the components layer before the utilities, which means that we'll be able to override these components with utilities if you want to. I'll create my create story class here, and I will use at apply and paste all the utilities that we had in there. If I go back to my HTML, you can see that it's now working properly. And if I hover on the create story, you can see that it's generated a class name that uses all the utilities composed together to create this style. So there you have it. This is Tailwind Stories, and I hope you enjoyed this video and learn a thing of two. See you later.